Hey, it's Scott. I, I hope you're doing really well. Um, it, if I look a little tired and overwhelmed, it's only because I'm a little tired and overwhelmed. Uh, it doesn't really matter who you are, what you do personally or professionally, whether you have a lot or a little. At some time in life, uh, there's going to come a point where you're going to get hit by overwhelm. Yesterday, that was me. I felt like I got hit by a Mack truck of overwhelm. All of a sudden, you know, you sit there and you think you got it figured out and everything is working, going exactly the, the way you think it is. And some, some outside obstacles come in and all of a sudden cause a change. And even the best laid plans, as they say, it's really why I wrote the book. That sucks. What now? Real world solutions for getting through what you're going through. Because at some point in life, no matter who you are, where you are, it's going to hit you. It, 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 TSWN is all about that, is just really getting yourself to understand that, that at some time, something's going to hit you. You're going to say, well, gosh, when is enough enough? And it's okay to say that for a moment. And then what did I do? You know, for me, after getting through the little stunned, you know, I mean, I was scared. I was shocked. I was surprised. I was all those things that aren't the good emotions. Um, but then I also stopped and, and created a strategy. What did I do? Well, the first thing I did is I texted a half a dozen friends and said, could you use some prayer and favor? Asking for a friend. I was the friend, by the way. Uh, but I didn't say that in it. I just said, could you use some prayer and favor? And I put some prayer warriors to work. I put some friends that I know are believers that, that uh, care for me, love me, would do what they could do to help. Well, then I went off and I had a meeting to take care of the unexpected little thing that popped up. But on the way, I called a friendly. Um, you know, I said, I, I got to hear something happy. And so I called Sean G. Murphy. And if you want to smile and you want to laugh, there's a guy you call. You call somebody that cares about you, loves you, knows they'll help you. Well, that's what I did. And uh, more, more than anything, we just, I asked him what was going on in his world because I wanted to hear of his excitement and what he was doing and understand that that, that helped me. Hearing his success helped me with where I was at that time, you know? Well, then I took care of the thing that I had to take care of in that meeting. Then I came out and all of a sudden my phone was blowing up with return text messages from friends. Kelly came back and said, hey, I, I just did some study in my quiet time this morning. And, and she related what she had learned and, and said, you know, God's answers for them was the same answer for you. You know, Adam said, um, if you got any specifics, I'll, I'll pray specifically. Otherwise, I'll pray some general prayers. Uh, Jim came back and said, uh, you know, I'm praying for your friend, but just in case, I hope some, you know, spills out on you. Tina said, I got your back. You know, it was just the encouragement that you needed. Well, I came back and, and uh, again, this is, this is real world, folks. This is the way life is these days. There, there are pressures. There are, there are things. Well, I get back and, and I get a preview of a TV show, uh, the focus that I did with Taylor uh, Longacre last week. We filmed it and they sent me the preview of it. And I, you know, it was a for my eyes only kind of thing. So I, I watched and at one point she asked me the, the question, you talk about in the book creating an evidence log. You know, what is an evidence log and why do you need one? Well, it was really interesting. All of a sudden, here I am sitting watching myself answer that question to her. And I just said, you know, faith is confidence in the unseen. It's assurance of the unknown. In other words, by definition, it hasn't happened yet. And you don't have the experience that proves it's there. It hasn't happened. So how do you strengthen your faith if you can't see it and it hasn't happened yet? When it does happen, you document it in an evidence log. You simply take the information 
And that's exactly what you do. You evidence that it's there. Now, it's funny. When I said, Taylor, what do you do if you want to strengthen your faith? Faith, she said, and we both said it at the same time. It was actually kind of funny. You've got to find evidence. Well, isn't it amazing? That's what an evidence log is for. Again, I talk about that in, in TSWN. That sucks. What now? Um, create an evidence log because you're on the right track. You're doing some great things. Well, then I kind of went back to work and, and after I watched that and right in the middle of that, the phone rang and it was my sister, Marilyn. And, and she called to let me know that she had just received a, a letter. Uh, well, not just, she had received it quite a while ago, just hadn't opened it, but she opened a, a letter that was dated uh, months earlier and it, it shared some unexpected favor with her. Amazing the timing, isn't it? And when that unexpected favor came and I went, wow, isn't that amazing? And so we ended up talking through what had just happened with me and she shared that favor with me. Well, it wasn't 20 minutes later when another friend, Andrew, called and said, uh, you know, I got your message earlier, sorry, I was busy, I waited till now and I wanted to get to you because I'm, I'm here for you, buddy. And, and I said, well, isn't it amazing? Less than two hours from when I sent out the text and I started this process, the favor has already been delivered. And so we, t we talked through the situation and he said, you know, it's really amazing what you did. And I said, really, what did I do? And he said, you didn't ask for a specific solution to the issue. You simply asked people to pray and ask God for favor. See, favor is God's solution to the situation. It's not the human solution. So often we look for the human solution and we, we look at what we think will fix it. Sometimes it does. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. But it was Andrew who ended up saying, thank you for blessing me by teaching me this lesson. Wow. How did that happen? I share this all for you um, for a variety of reasons. Number one, I'm tremendously grateful for the favor that showed up. I'm honored. Um, but the other thing is I want to make sure that I'm not the only one who's going through stuff from time to time. And I want to share hope and inspiration with you when you need it. Not only do I want to do that this way, I do it through my coaching and my training and my speaking and things like that. That's a little more formal. But also through the new book in Action Journal, That Sucks, What Now? Real World Solutions for Getting Through What You're Going Through. It's put together for a reason not to chronicle my life. Although you have to hear some of the things that I've been through to understand how I got through them and, and how you can get through them as well. I'd really love for you to take advantage of this for you so that you get new tips, new techniques, new strategies, new process, new stuff that I've used. It's how I've gotten through a lot of situations in my life. And it's time for it to come out in a book, in an action journal, in such a way that it can make a difference in your life. And it can make a difference in the lives of those who count on you. We're all in this together, gang. Respect, honor, and dignity for all. Let's make it all happen. God bless you. Appreciate you.